the majority, I mean the totality of former Chai soldiers were trained in training camps. Now my question is the following, do the conditions of life in the training camps can be qualified per se as a traumatic event? If you're trained by punishment and threat, if fear is instilled purposefully and if there are moments you think that if you don't obey you will be injured or die, yes. If you follow up on what has happened in your life compared to boys, compared to girls, you realize that girls have been usually more confronted with traumatic experiences earlier and more, and especially of a nature that is um, more traumatizing. There are experiences which are more likely to cause the development of post-traumatic stress disorder than others. For example, if you've been raped, if the perpetrator, any experience where the perpetrator is physically close with a knife, with a gun, raping you or violating you, assaulting you, that such experiences are more likely to cause us to develop psychiatric disorders. So girls are just more prone to undergo such experiences. So as a girl enters a career in child soldiering, she enters um, at a different level of vulnerability often compared to boys. So in the outcome, you think they have more psychiatric problems, but in, real li in reality, they have just more load, more exposure to traumatic stressors. You say that post-traumatic stress disorder is also significantly associated with negative behavior against the own family. Does this negative behavior have also been observed with regards to girls or women vis-a-vis -vis their own child? Yes. If you are constantly alert, constantly afraid of danger going on around you, and your body is sort of running on a hyper-aroused level, right? You might have high blood pressure, you might have just a higher state of physiologically running on a higher level of metabolism. Any noise or any disturbance, any unexpected, let's say um, a door slams and you startle, you remain in that condition for quite a while. A person with PTSD might stay in a state of arousal for half an hour or longer. And within that, a f a f it's like as if fear is sort of very much evoked in you and that makes you act out. So these mothers are <laughs> have a very hard time because they usually, they punish or they over punish or they they run on a very high emotional level, like they shout or scream and afterwards regret. So it's a constant mix of uh, up on a sympathetic arousal level and afterwards you feel very guilty for not having controlled yourself better. In African societies, you have very clear gender role expectations. So what a woman should do and what her role is in life and what a man should do and what his role is in life is much more clear than let's say maybe in Germany, I don't know. So um, if let's say boys come back and they show symptoms of post-traumatic stress disorder, if they are of the type that they might even go into flashbacks or tonic immobility like freezing or other maybe acting out, reactive aggression. Um, there could be a fact that, that the community thinks that they are not good, um, they're not going to be sort of given the land of the parents because he's not normal anymore or he's not going to get a, a share of responsibility in the community. So um, that people might feel they're not to be trusted anymore. You know, these are people, they come back from the bush, who knows? Uh, so the community might stigmatize them for their strangeness um, in terms of taking leadership roles, for example, or simple male roles, cultural expectations. For girls, of course, it's um, 
I mean, the, the idea is that you marry one man and then you stay with that man for the rest of your life and he will be the father of your children as well. So if you come from the bush and you have a baby that you bring back or if you have been forced to marry somebody uh, while in the group, in the, in the army, it will be very difficult for you to find a proper husband, somebody to marry you or even to bring up you help you bring up these children who are not, who he is not the father of. It's my understanding that actually the age is not per se a factor which can have an impact in the development of a post-traumatic stress disorder. Is mm. it correct? From the age of about six years onwards, after being threatened at a level of traumatic stress, you can develop post-traumatic stress disorder. So it doesn't really matter whether you're six or 16 or 60. It depends more on your life experiences. How much have you encountered in terms of traumatic life threat? And then you reach a point and then that is for you the lowest maximum and you develop a disorder. However, if, of course, a trauma, uh, let's say, if a trauma load is fulfilled at an early age, if a child develops post-traumatic stress disorder, let's say, at age seven, compared to somebody who is 17, it does impact more on the development of the person. Because trauma freezes learning. It freezes the capacity to develop and grow as a personality and also intellectually. Let's say you're eight years old, you suffer from PTSD, you start taking drugs because you can't take the suffering. That impacts even more on your healthy, on, on your chance of going back to health and maturing. You set out several reasons why fighter groups recruit uh, or may recruit children or mm -hmm. adolescents. One related to the fearlessness or perceived fearlessness mm -hmm. of a child soldier as opposed to an adult. Why, based on your experience, are children perceived or are they actually considered fearless? You have to understand the cultural context in Africa, children are, or families are built in a very hierarchical structure. So children are not actually taught as much as in maybe in Germany where I come from to think for themselves or to estimate life consequences and learning for themselves. It's really more you follow the order of an older, a more adult person that you are living with. So also a, a commander would be a person of respect, a person of great um, trust. And if that person says, this is what we're going to do, and I decide that this is a good thing, a child is very unlikely to even rethink such a decision uh, or challenge such a decision in this context. So. Um, there is, of course, a certain amount of, uh, I wouldn't say ignorance, but not knowing what's going to happen. I mean, even a battle is a very strategic concept. How are we going to go about this and how are we doing this? Usually children are not informed about the details of how this ambush or this attack is going to take place, at least not the children I have met. They were surprised by many things that they encountered during such a day. So they're not made part of decision making and fear usually comes from knowing what to expect. You know, if you do not know what's coming your way and an adult person says, this is good and we're going to do this, we need to do this, or I need you to help me do this, a child will follow. 